Ladies and gentlemen, seekers of truth and knowledge, welcome to a one-of-a-kind experience that will take you on a captivating journey beyond our world. Today, we have a special treat for you as we sit down with the renowned Andromedan contactee, Alex Collier. Prepare yourself for a rapid-fire question and answer session that delves into the depths of cosmic wisdom and unveils the mysteries of the universe. As always, please remember to like this video and share it with your friends and family. That way, it gets seen by more truth seekers. So, without further ado, here are today's rapid-fire questions and answers. Dear Alex, I love the Q&A every second week. What fantastic questions people have. I'm learning a lot. My question, are benevolent aliens helping the White Hats in their mission to rescue the children in tunnels around the world? Are they helping both on the ground and in the skies? Are they responsible for the beams that people are reported to have seen? Uh, that's the first question I opened up with when we started the webinar today. That was the question I cheated on that I saw. So the answer is yes, 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 and yes. Uh, they're aware of, of what we're up against. The white hats are, know what they're up against. Even the dark hat military personnel, they know what they're up against. But they're so compromised and, they're, and they fear for their families and their loved ones' lives that they have to do what they're being ordered to do on the dark side. I don't believe for a minute all of them haven't had epiphanies. I, I know for a fact some of them have had epiphanies. They're stuck. They're trapped. They sold out. And now they don't know how to get out of it. It's a very, very tough spot to be in. It's a very, very tough spot to be in. And in the end, they're just going to have to decide to do the right thing. They're just going to have to decide to do the right thing. Um, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, to quote Star Trek. And they're all going to have that moment. They are. But what they do with that moment will probably decide in a large part and in a large way, their future incarnations. So, will they be at the very last minute a white hat? Um, I, I think so. I, I really do. Because what waits for them? What waits for them if they destroy, if they choose to be on the dark side and try to destroy the light? What waits for them? The darkness? to live like that for the rest of their life and their children's lives and their children's 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 children to live in tyranny that's a life where any one of their children's children's children can be taken to an underground bunker and fed off of they really i gotta know i gotta think that somewhere left inside of them there is some humanity left and they're going to have that epiphany they're going to make that decision i truly believe that maybe not all of them but i think a majority of them will in the end they will do the right thing Can you, can you suggest some ways for developing conscious relationships with our star guides? No, I cannot. Um, that is not my forte. I'm not a psychic or a clairvoyant. Um, that is not a skill set I have. I'm working on that myself. 
uh, even though I've had this relationship for a, a long period of time with, with Morinae and, and Paseas, well, Paseas has crossed over, but with Morinae, um, the relationship isn't always consistent. Uh, I, I never know when I'm going to hear from them. There is no pattern to it. So when I'm out of the pattern, when I'm not talking to him, I'm always working on myself. And I want you to understand that uh, I go out of my way not to depend on him to give me answers, that I continuously work on myself to connect to my higher self, to my fifth dimensional self, uh, or higher, should there be a higher, I hope, that, um, that I get the answers for myself. Because only in that way will I self-empower myself. And that's ultimately the goal here, right? Is to become self-empowered. To unconditionally be responsible for oneself. So that's what I do. Um, and that's what I'm, I'm constantly working on. So um, it's always nice to get the short answers and not have to work so hard. But, uh, you know, I, I don't get the shortcuts. <laughs> I really don't. Um, and they never give me answers about myself. They never have. So it's a good question. Uh, but there are people who have that ability to, to guide and to mentor in that way. So you'll have to seek, seek them out. Okay, next question, please. Dear Alex, who are the Tegetian Pleiadians and what part did they play in Earth's awakening? Awakening. Know anything about the Tegetans? As you are aware, the Pleiadian star system has many different civilizations. They always don't see eye to eye on things. And from my understanding is that they can be very political. The Tegetans, for the most part, have always been helpful and kind to humanity. This cannot be said about those from Aldebaran. And those from, I think it's Mika. They have sometimes not tolerated humanity. Have they helped? Yes. Are they involved in helping now? I, I clearly hope so. I mean, they have a responsibility here to assist and to help, since some of their own are here on the surface, uh, both as Terrans and as themselves. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck with what to say and what not to say because this is a spiritual and a military op, all right, of which the rescue of humanity is at stake. I really don't know how much to say. So probably the less I say, the better. In the end, when it's all said and done, we'll know. They will come forward. And they will share how they've done, what they did, and how they've helped. And, and their relationship with us. We're, we're going to know all this. It's just, it's just a win. Literally, it's just a win. Are the Andromedans currently working directly, physically, psychically, star seeds or otherwise, meaning inner Earth or other galactic ETs, either e, i.e. Pleiadians or Syrians, on Earth other than yourself? 
Is this something they do or just don't do unless someone is vested or direct lineage contracted, etc., to do so? <laughs> Many clauses in that. <laughs> uh, for reasons of security, I can't honestly tell you how many uh, boots on the ground there are because I really don't know. Um, M's group and team are working with those in fourth density who are working with those in 3D to secure the planet and to create a perimeter uh, that's solid, that's going to last hundreds if not thousands of years. Humanity has never been had, never really had its chance to mature into itself. In a thousand years, the galaxy will know about us, truly know about us. And when you're dealing with life forms that exist and live in a single lifetime, 10,000 years, several thousands of years. It's it's literally just an hour, a thousand years in, in the way we count time. It's literally just an hour to the universe, or I should say the galaxy. But every opportunity is going to be granted us to mature into ourselves. To make something of ourselves. Now, mind you, that with all the history that has happened on this planet, with all the interaction that's happened on this planet, whether we realize it or not, our DNA has knowledge. So what we have going on here is a fourth, fifth dimensional template being projected onto humanity as we speak. That template is of a very, very high frequency. Along with that is the, the change in galactic frequency. Are you aware that the Schumann resonance is now gone from 30 to 40. Are you folks aware of that, that? That most of the time it's hovering just around 38 to 42. Uh, I think last week we had several spikes to 120. So with that, with the accompanying of the human resonance, the galactic frequency, and the templates that's being overlaid to humanity, it's putting all this pressure on this dark presence that's been here. And what's happening is the food source, for lack of a better word, the food source is the frequency of the food source is rising and we are escaping the grip of the darkness. There are boots on the ground being the eye of the storm themselves. They are also frontliners feeding direct intelligence back. To their special forces teams. That are working out there. Those boots on the ground. Are working with others to clean out some of the underground stuff, if not all of them, and to manage things that are going on on the surface, to head things off, to give a heads up, to protect when and where something bad is scheduled to happen, and to neutralize the threats. Forces of light and forces of dark are in combat as we speak all around us. 
The situation's complicated, folks. It's really complicated. Why there's no timelines there really aren't and you shouldn't look for timelines you need to let that go we all need to shift our way away from thinking in time and being in the moment because that is where your 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 most power exists is in the moment okay Because in the moments where you're creating your present and your future. Greetings, Alex. CERN just announced that they are creating a parallel universe. Could this possibly be a new migration path for those who do not make the journey to 5D? Much appreciation for all you do. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure CERN is doing all of that stuff. They have to be saying something to justify all of the billions of dollars they're being given. Do I think they're creating an alternate universe? No. Do I think they'd be allowed to do it? No. But they have to justify all the billions of dollars they're getting. So they have to tell you something that they're doing. Do I think that, well, let me just put it this way. This bunch that is here, they're not going to get away. It's just not going to happen. So... If they're allowed to create a space, if they're all, if anybody's going to allow CERN to create a space, it's going to be a jail that they're going to be creating. And once these idiots go through it, click, they're locked in. They're the, now they're done. Um, there are some very 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 smart benevolent forces at work here, and as the pressure builds. As the frequency rises, this bunch here is going to get more and more dangerous. If they see an escape, then maybe they'll just pop into that little spot. They'll close it, seal it with a, you know, with a wrap, and just now they're in jail. They've imprisoned themselves, and they did it voluntarily, thinking they're going to escape and get away. So maybe that's the plan. I don't know, but are, are the benevolence going to allow us, these mad scientists, to create an alternate universe? I don't buy it for a minute. Not for a minute. No, there's way too much at stake here. Way too much. So, and we are literally in the cradle. When it comes to quantum physics. So you have a lot to learn. Um, we have to mature. Do, dear Alex, do the A's have different experts who specialize in specific social areas, e.g. interdimensional explorers, scientists, teachers, ship engineers, etc.? How do they realize and develop their skills and abilities? That's a good question, and I've sort of answered that before in the past. Because of the length of their of their lifetimes. What I'm about to share with you has been given to me in our linear time so that in sharing the information, you could put it into context or we could put it into context. Their children 
go to school the equivalent of 150 years. Their children, young adults, literally learn all the arts and sciences and knowledge that they have current up to date. They practice what is called the law of consistency. Whatever their children are learning is the most current knowledge and information available at that time. Those that come up behind them usually are brought up to higher speeds or more information or more current knowledge than they. But all the information and knowledge that's available um, through cosmology, anthropology, archaeology, galactic archaeology, um, horticulture, all of it, they constantly update and is constantly in cur current. At that point, the individual is allowed to choose which field they want to explore. And they are allowed to then participate in that. Now, they can do that for 150 years, 200 years. And at some point when they've decided, OK, I want to do something different, they're allowed to do it. Because they're constantly being updated with knowledge and information. And it's all hands-on. Using holographic technology, their education is continuous. For those that are, let's say, uh, cosmologists or galactic archaeologists or geologists, anything that's discovered in another field is automatically shared with them. So the information is spread across all knowledge of the entire race. Now, in the Xenotes, they have male, female, and androgynous, just so you know. There is a part of their society, a small percentage, that is capable of giving birth on their own to an offspring. And then, of course, you have the sexes. So the information is spread across all genders regardless. The children being raised today typically are smarter than their parents. And everybody's okay with that because they understand that for the benefit of the race and the culture of their humanity, or whatever you want to call it, that knowledge needs to be present currently present so that the law of consistency ensures the success and the longevity of their race. Uh, they would never dumb it down, ever. And that would be the most punishable sin imaginable, is to dumb down future generations. Because as they've explored, they have found many different uh, the ruins of many different civilizations and other worlds that did not exist because they basically took themselves out. They forgot their original intent, which was to continue to thrive and evolve. Um, and there's not a single race in the universe that aborted its own that survived any longer than 120 years. None of those races ever survived. Are the reptilians and other regressive ETs still on Earth and in the They're underground caves? Is the battle in the space? 
uh, in particular in our solar system and around the moon ongoing, or is it over? Thanks for answering. My understanding is that that there's still some things going on underground, but primarily that the focus has shifted to the bottom of the oceans. So what we need to do is focus on us, focus on ourselves individually and humanity as a whole. What is it that we want? That's the question, okay? That's the term paper that's on the desk. What do you want? The alien thing is going to be dealt with and is being dealt with. So let's take that out of the equation for the moment. When you break it all down to it, to the simplest formula, it's about us. This shift that's coming is about us, humanity. Regardless of race, creed, or color, it's about us. They out there see us as one family, as one civilization. Many different tribes, but one civilization. We have got to elevate our thinking to that next level. Many tribes, but one civilization. That's what we have to do. We have to ascend our consciousness and our thoughts to become that, the next level. How did Moronet know that you would have crazy dreams once you were in 5D? What was so different between those dreams and the ones you have on Earth? Do you remember any of those dreams? Would you care to share any of them with us? Okay, well, obviously, I'm not the first contactee. And, and, I, and, and when they were talking to me, there were also three others. And I've told you that all of that. I've told all of you that from the very beginning. So I assume that uh, the others, and, and I know it's a huge presumption that they were having the, the same experience as I was, but they were also having the dreams. Um, this also could be true of maybe they were contacting uh, other races and citizens of a fourth density realm, and they would have that experience. Uh, it also could be that, you know, as I shared with you in the very beginning, when I first started talking, that there were 22 star systems that were going through the same process that we were, that had to be freed. Uh, I'm assuming those were all in third density. And it could be that in the process of contacting them, they were also having the experiences. Now, this is not just limited to human beings. There are many other species that are conscious. And it could be that they all experience different dreams because the weirdness is not necessarily the subconscious mind, but the conscious mind. It's like, okay, I'm in a completely different reality here, and I know it. So how am I going to interpret, you know, how do I interpret all these things that are going on? For example, I know it wasn't, it's not the, the subconscious, because when I first walked on the ship, the mothership, there were things around me I didn't see. I, I simply had no idea they were there. And for the first 42 days, I believe it was, it's kind of hard to gauge the, the actual times and days. But there were times where, you know, M was always pretty close. And he would move me gently by the arm or the shoulder. He would just move me to walk in a different way as opposed to walking straight ahead. And it wasn't until my mind became accustomed to the environment that I began to see things that weren't there 
that have always been there, but they suddenly weren't there. I mean, that weren't there, that suddenly were there. And then I realized that my mind didn't know how to comprehend the environment I was in. And yeah, the dreams were wild. And no, I don't, I don't care to share them. But that's a great question. That's, that's a great question. I mean, there are probably just a few that I remember that were like so weird. And I recall mentioning it to Phaseus, and he goes, it just happens. That was his response. It just happens. Okay. <laughs> um, but, you know, Phaseus was Phaseus. <laughs> you know, uh, he could be uh, incredibly engaging, or he could be curt. You know, uh, Andromedans can be moody, <laughs> in case you didn't get that. <laughs> they could be moody. So, that's a good question, though. Thank you. All right, next question. When you say moody, do you mean, do, do, do they ever like, I mean, in your experience, did they ever like have a, like a spring in their step and a cheery demeanor? Or were they always very serious? How did, when they walked, no, did, no, they're, was they're it very, very light or heavy? No, they're very, they're joyous. Uh, my observations is that virtually all of them are very joyous. Um, some of them walk around with a serious look on their face. But I don't know what they're thinking, so I can't interpret that as they were, you know, heavy. That I never received that energy at all, with the exception of at times from Viseus. And and I've talked about this. You know, he um, towards the end there, before he was transitioning, um, I think he was just really tired of having lived such a long life in one attitude. <laughs> I think he was ready to move on, you know? And, and, and you know, Morinese even said that to me. He was, he was ready to move on towards the end. He, he was ready to start over. So, because he had been in that one physicality for so long. And, uh, Look at look at Mur. <laughs> he was grumpy. He was grumpy. So you know, and I've had grandfathers. I get that. <laughs> so you know, people are who they are. There you have it, fellow truth seekers. An enlightening and exhilarating rapid-fire question and answer session with the remarkable Alex Collier, sharing his profound encounters with the benevolent Andromedan extraterrestrial beings. As we continue on our cosmic journey, let us embrace the wisdom of the Andromedans and carry their message of love, unity, and compassion with us. Together, we can create a world where humanity stands united, ready to embrace the wonders that await us in the vast expanse of the universe. If you found this rapid-fire question and answer session fascinating, don't forget to hit that like button and share this video with your friends and family. Subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on more captivating content like this. Thank you for joining us on this incredible adventure. Until next time, may the stars guide you on your path of enlightenment and exploration, and remember to always seek knowledge and stay curious. If you would like to see Andromedan contact the Alex Collier live via video stream, we host an online seminar three times a month on a Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. For more information and dates of upcoming online seminars, please visit alexcollier.org. Please click on one of the above videos to seek more of Alex Collier's knowledge.